Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Julia. I'm your average 20 something year old that works a tech job living in New York City. I'm also a part time content creator and I'm going to walk you through a typical work from home day for me. Starting off with Pilates. I'm definitely a morning workout session kind of gal because if I don't do it in the morning, I get way too lazy to do it throughout the day. Also, morning workouts just always wake me up and put me in a good and productive mood. Since I don't have to commute into the office today, I like to substitute my morning commute with another activity, whether it's exercising or reading or journaling. My exercise of choice today was Pilates, and this was a speed class, so it was only 40 minutes, which is great because I don't sweat like crazy, but I still feel accomplished and refreshed. After I come home, I take a very quick shower and get ready for my day. Making my bed is always a must because I cannot be productive in clutter or mess, and it also prevents me from laying back down and taking a nap. I don't put on makeup when I work from home and to be honest, that has been the best thing ever for my skin. I usually don't put on face makeup either outside of a little concealer here and there and some BB cream, but in turn, I do religiously invest in my skincare routine. All right, it's time to get my workday started. I don't usually have breakfast, but I do take my vitamins in the morning, and I always have a cup of coffee and water on my table at all times. I drink a lot of coffee, so be prepared for that, and this is the first glass of the day. Oh, and the work from home outfit. I just put on this sweatshirt because my camera is usually on and I need to look somewhat presentable, but bottoms are still PJs because I'm lazy and I just wanna be comfy. Definitely leaning into this work from home stereotype, but you know, no one's gotta know. So I typically like to schedule all of my meetings in the morning. I always say that I have a lot of meetings and you might be wondering, what kind of meetings do you have, Julia? You're always in meetings. Well, aside from larger meetings like company all hands and org wide share outs, there are a couple of different types of more intimate meetings that I participate in on a weekly basis. I split them into two buckets, one-on-ones and status updates. Hello. For one-on-ones, I typically meet with my PM or product manager, other data scientists, and my manager once a week for 30 minutes. For meetings with my PM or my product manager, I usually update them on my work, any dependencies or blockers that they can help me with, and sometimes they come to the meeting and they ask me for numbers like, hey, can you help me estimate how much revenue we're going to make when we launch this product in 2024? I need this number for this presentation I have next week. For meetings, with other data scientists, there's a plethora of talking points that we can go through. First and foremost, we can use that time for peer review, which is super important. We would peer review each other's code or presentations, pipelines, calculations, anything. It can also be more of a mentoring or mentorship kind of conversation. I've been both a mentee and a mentor. And at my company, it's usually one data scientist per product team, but sometimes my product does align closely with another data scientist. So we can also use that time to knowledge share. And lastly, I have weekly one-on-ones with my manager. I update them on my current work, get feedback on how I'm doing, if I'm meeting goals and expectations, because you know, your girl's out here trying to get that next promotion. And I also express to them if I need more support or if I want to do more of this instead of that and they also help me prioritize if i have too much going on the second bucket of meetings is for team updates i'm a product data scientist which means that i am embedded in a product team but i also have my home data science team as well so i have two recurring meetings with the first being stand up with my product team every day for 15 minutes 
Everyone working on the product attends, so we have PMs, engineers, designers, user research sometimes, and data science. In this meeting, we go through individual updates, we go through open tickets, timeline updates, and also parking lots where we just discuss anything that's on our minds or something that's a little bit more urgent that needs to be addressed. And then I also have knowledge shares with my data science team once a week for 30 minutes. Here we also go through individual updates, but we also go through best practices and sometimes people People will give presentations of their work as well. So this morning I had a one-on-one -on -one with my PM, another one-on-one -on -one with a data scientist on my team. I also had a one hour long all hands with my org and I just listened in on that. And lastly, I had stand up with my product team. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. I will see ya. Bye. It is finally lunchtime and I try to eat on the dot at 12 p.m. every single day. I have a hold on my calendar so people know not to book over this time because let's be for real, I am not pleasant when I'm hangry. During lunch, I like to keep my meals light and try to be as healthy as possible because I usually pig out for dinner. So I usually go for a salad, but since it's super cold today, I decided to go for this really easy Thai style chicken and bell pepper soup from Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal kit company that provides step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured premium ingredients that save you time. They're changing the meal kit subscription game with options for every lifestyle, including keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Green Chef makes cooking easy, so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals. All the meals are doorstep delivered with pre-portioned ingredients and pre-made sauces. It was such a time saver, especially on a busy workday like today. All I had to do was unpack the ingredients, chop up some vegetables, and assemble. The meals are so delicious because their expert chefs curate every recipe so you can enjoy nutritious, restaurant-quality dishes at home without compromising on taste. This meal was so filling and exactly what I needed to help push me through the rest of my workday. If you're interested, you can use my code JuliaFay60 to get 60% off and free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Okay, we are back to work. I really try to protect my afternoons from meetings, but sometimes it's inevitable. Today, I have some large chunks of time in the afternoon to hash out some work. You may ask, Julia, what does your technical work consist of? My work consists of many different deliverables, thanks for asking, but if I had to sum it up, it would be split into three main parts, experimentation, foundational research, and dashboarding. Experimentation can consist of A-B tests, AA tests, non-inferiority tests, etc. Testing is really important on a feature-based team because it allows us to validate our results and back it up with supporting data. There's actually quite a lot that goes into this realm of work. First and foremost, drafting test plans. This sounds like a short bullet, but it's actually a lot of work with a lot of different moving components. You need to align the goal and hypothesis and desired outcome with your PM, get designs from the UX designers, make sure that all of the actions are logged with the engineers so that you're able to measure your metrics, list out any of the caveats for testing. It's a whole team effort and my test plans usually exceed like four to five pages full of context. After your test plan is solidified, you need to calculate your sample size. I do this usually in Excel or Python, depending on the level of confidence that I need for the number. And then you need to set up and run the test, analyze the results, which I typically do in Python and SQL. And one of the most important steps is to present the results and key takeaways. Presenting results, marketing my work, and driving impact is a really big part in what I do as a product data scientist. Next, we have foundational research, and this bucket can be a little bit more ambiguous, but some of the tasks that I've done that falls under here include trying to sample size opportunity for a new product, aiding product strategy with numbers, or just trying to understand broader questions like, what's Gen Z listening to these days? Or what's the next country that we can launch this feature to? So to answer these broader questions, I can work with other disciplines like with user research, do a qualitative and quantitative research piece or use historical data for EDA and modeling. 
Lastly, we have dashboarding. At my company, we use Tableau, but other companies also use Looker. And the work under here include designing dashboard requirements. I view a dashboard as an internal product and the employees consuming it as my users. So it's really important to set straight what is most helpful to put on this dashboard and to design it in a way that's easy for the end user to consume. So there's a good amount of talking to stakeholders to understand the use cases at this point. Then comes the data wrangling and cleaning, creating the actual pipelines, and then I finally build the dashboard. Creating it is the fun part, everything before it, not so much. And lastly, since this product is live internally and assuming that people still use it, I also need to continuously maintain it and add in more metrics or filters when I see fit. Okay, I'm pooped and halfway through the afternoon, I caved and I really wanted to lay down on my bed and watch TikToks, so I did. So for 15 minutes, I just scrolled through TikTok on my bed. This is my guilty pleasure on a work from home day. I couldn't tuck myself under the covers though or else I would have really fallen asleep. Okay, this is a very rare occasion of me actually leaving my house on a work from home day. Usually I'm a hermit and I stay indoors outside of, you know, going to my workout class in the morning, but I actually ran out of oat milk and that is such a necessity for me. So I took a nice walk to the grocery store, got the second to last carton of oat milk in addition to some other goodies, and then I headed back home. For dinner, I was craving pasta for some reason, so that is exactly what I made with a side of stir-fried kale. <laughs> I also love calling my dad when I cook because it usually takes me around 30 to 45 minutes to make dinner and that's a good amount of time for us to catch up and for him to nag at me. Side note, I grew up eating pasta on the sweeter side. I know that's kind of weird, but Hong Kong pasta is like salty sweet versus salty sour. So I typically add a couple teaspoons of sugar to my meat sauce. My boyfriend actually finds it really weird, but let me know how y'all consume your pasta. Dinner time is when I get to relax and really let go, so I'm enjoying my food while watching a show on Netflix. I'm currently watching a Korean drama called The Interest of Love. A friend recommended it to me, and not gonna lie, it's been a little dry and slow, but I'm at episode 10 and it's starting to pick up, so I hope that it just gets better and better from here. I watched the full episode which was around an hour and I had to force myself to get up and go back to my desk because it was now time to do some content work. If you've been following me for a while, you would know that I used to dedicate some time after work to run a nonprofit. But since the beginning of this year, I actually stepped down in order to free up more time to work on content creation. I still love the org, they continue to do some amazing stuff for the New York City community, so if you haven't yet, make sure to go check them out. I totally forgot that I had a call with my animator, and I prematurely took a quick rinse and switched back to my PJs, so I'm covering up my top with yet another jacket. I recently reached out to an animator because I wanted to invest a little bit more into my channel, so today they were presenting me with the initial storyboard for an animation that I requested. Hello. Yeah, 
Uh, thanks so much for dropping on such a late call. Ooh. I really like this. Yeah, this was exactly what I was envisioning. Yeah, just one question. Instead of the blinds, can we do like curtains? Because I actually like don't have any blinds <laughs> here. So like, if we can just... That was the last meeting of the day and I just spend the rest of the night editing. I know some of y'all have been wondering how I edit my videos and actually it's so boring and I'm not the best at it so no tutorial for now but I do use Premiere Pro and my typical schedule for editing is as follows. On Monday I like to do a rough cut of my footage. Typically depending on the video I have around like one to two hours of footage and I try to cut that down to 30 minutes. On Tuesday I'll do a, another rough cut and music so I'll try to cut that 30 minutes to the 10 to 15 minute time frame and then I'll add in music which is really important for me and for my videos because it creates like the ambiance and vibe and mood. Wednesday I'll clean everything up, add in transitions, make sure that the video flows well and then I'll also add in captions. Thursdays are for graphics, sometimes I'll have handwritten text and icons in my videos. I'll also create the thumbnail, export the video and pre-upload it onto YouTube so that it's ready to go live for Friday. I usually post between 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. EST, so if you don't see a video during that time frame, that means that I unfortunately did not meet my deadline that week. Okay, it's around 12.30 a.m. and this is when I typically go to sleep. So I brush my teeth, wash my face, did my nighttime skincare routine, and before I go to bed, I have this terrible habit of going on TikTok for another 10 to 15 minutes ish but hey I earned it okay and it helps me go to bed happy anyways that is it for this video I hope you all enjoyed I'm actually really curious to know what you do for a living can you work from home do you go into the office let me know in the comments down below and I will see you all in the next one bye